of like Logan in the camp, what made you uh, decide to go with him on Saturday for number two? Uh, just his consistency, decision making, um, which we asked for at every position. But he, he played really well in camp. And I think just being in our program for two years, because last year he was a true freshman, helped tremendously. Um, and he's been taking a lot more reps because he has became the number two guy. And I thought he did a good job when he got in the game on Saturday. Uh, very, very calm and collected poise. Uh, quarterback, we throw a lot at that position. And uh, we ask a lot, and he's, you know, he's, he's very cerebral and takes things in. And if he makes a mistake, he's able to shrug it off. And I think our guys are uh, very positive, so I think our guys respond to that and, and look to him just like they do to Adrian as a leader as well. In the middle of the, in the sort of beginning of the second quarter through the end of the third, on Saturday you really threw the ball down the field quite a bit. What did you make of that, and how, how big of a role does protection and the way your offensive lines were settled in play in your ability? Yeah, uh, well, good question. So, Throwing the ball down the field is everybody. It's the offensive line protecting. It could be the running back protecting. It could be you know, they obviously see the quarterback and the receivers getting open. That's a big part of it. But it also could be what the defense is doing. Um, you know, we thought there were some things that they were doing where we could throw the ball down the field based on their coverages. But you still got to execute it. And I was really proud of how our offensive line improved um, in pass protection. We got a big challenge again this week and every week coming on, coming up. But but they, it was, there was a lot of improvement there. And we focused on that. We really focused on practice. Um, on pass protection, on different blitzes, um, and just getting our guys better in that area. And then you still got to complete the pass. So I thought Adrian did a good job standing in there and being poised, um, making some very accurate throws. And then uh, I thought the receivers did a good job too, um, getting open. Who have been your best blockers on the perimeter so far? Well, our tight ends, so we, our tight ends always do a good job on the perimeter because we, we play those guys as, as receivers. Um, I thought this week, we took a, a step up in perimeter blocking from a receiver standpoint. Still got a ways to go. Uh, just not, not consistent as we'd like it to be. But uh, Omar Manning showed flashes. Uh, Wyatt showed flashes. He's probably one of our better blockers. Um, Sam, Samari, we're asking some th- him to do some things that he didn't have to do in his previous program. And he's kind of just learning something. So sometimes it's not just blocking, but knowing who to block. And so he's, he's getting better at it every day. Uh, so I think. They all, you know, had their moments, but we can be better. Matt, what kind of shared traits do you see in the guys who are new to the program and are doing well on offense, like Oliver in the first game, Samari, Chancellor, uh, Marquise? Um, are there things that those guys have in common that have allowed them to have early success? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all football savvy guys and pick things up well, but uh, they're all very humble. They listen. Um, that, that's the whole thing as a coach. You want guys that are, that are coachable, that'll listen. Uh, we, we really try to emphasize part of the learning process is making mistakes when, when you're a new guy and we expect them to make mistakes. And so you can't get down on yourself. That's how you learn. And they have really good attitudes towards that. You know, that's dealing with adversity, which they've all had to do. I think in football, it's, that's part of the game is things aren't always going to go your way and you're not always going to do the right thing. You're not, you're not going to be as, as comfortable if you're learning something new. And so just getting out of your comfort zone, um, uh, making a mistake, but learning from it and moving on. I think they've all I've done a good job of that. Are you able to learn as much about those guys or, or vet them as well when they come through the portal as opposed to all of the time that you invest in a high school recruit? Yeah, it, it's, it's hard. Uh, it, it, every situation is different. You know, so the portal, a high school guy, hopefully you've developed a long relationship with. Uh, you've seen him practice. you spent time with him on the phone. You've talked to his coaches. You, you, you kind of know how he's going to respond to coaching. And you, you should have a good, really good feel for the guy. Um, the transfer portal, yeah, you, you get less information. Um, a lot of times the transfer portal, you know, you got to do some still investigative work like recruiting, but you just don't, it's not as extended as period. Because transfer portal, sometimes you got to make quick decisions. Guys are on there and they're leaving. Uh, we were very fortunate with Samori because uh, relationship with his former high college coach, where he was really good. It was easy to see he was really good on tape. But uh, I felt great about his character and on all the intangibles that you don't see on tape after talking to their coaches. What was the genesis of that triple option that you started to develop with Samori? And, you know, maybe in a belt, uh, Scott Frost said he doesn't know how much it's going to be part of your offense in the future, but he likes it a little bit. What, what, what did you guys decide to develop it and who came up with the idea? Yeah, I mean, it's a combination. It's, it's always been in our offense. We've just, we're using a little bit more. I mean, we used it back in the Oregon days. Uh, what, what it lets you do is it's, it lets you get the ball on the perimeter with skill guys. Um, and, and, you know, you're always reading a defender, too. So it kind of 
based on what the defense does too. Because sometimes, it, based on what, what the defense is doing, it might look like it's option, but the ball is getting getting hand off. So uh, we incorporate a lot of reads in our offense, and so that's just one more play with another read. So it's not expensive. When I say expensive, it's easy for our guys. You know, it might look a little complicated to a defense, but it's very easy. It's just you know, it's running inside zone with sometimes you know some window dressing. So it's that part's easy, but it also does based on what the defense gives you can give you an opportunity to get the ball in space in the perimeter which we always like to do that you know make him defend the whole field it feels like adrian's pretty comfortable running that triple option when he's good at timing the pitch have you found that that plays a little bit more effective the way that you're designing it than maybe some of his design throws in recent years sure well great point i mean to run some of that stuff on the perimeter you got to have a quarterback that can run and uh and you've got to work a ton on, on ball mechanics because that's not that's not easy. I mean, we didn't put any, we haven't put a ball on the ground, knock on wood, from a pitch standpoint, because uh, we spent a lot of time addressing that and we work that every day in, in our drill. So he's done a really good job of that. I think our guys figuring out the pitch relationship have done a pretty good job of that. You also got to have some courage as a quarterback because some the key of pitching it sometimes is, is when to do it and holding on to the last second. You know you're going to get take a big shot, but still having the courage to take that shot and pitch it out there. And, and he does a good job. And you got to make good decisions because there's sometimes it's, it's a split-second decision, and we try to put guys in those situations where did he tell you to pitch or did he not tell you to pitch it? Well, you have to do that over and over again to do that. Since Marty played a couple different positions in Montana, but have you ever – did you talk to him about whether he'd ever played as the – Pitch man in that because it looks like no, we, we, we were joking around with him. Now, we're gonna have to move you in the running back room. Now, you're carrying the ball in. But he uh, he's he's adjusted well. Um, all our receivers can do that, it, you know, it's built kind of built into our system. So, again, it wasn't that hard or expensive, but it was cool to see again getting a good player in space. Um, and you, you kind of look at it like quick passing game. I mean, you're just even though it's, it's a pitch, it's the same thing as throwing the bubbles, it's the same thing as throwing just a quick pass. It's just getting a guy in space that can hopefully make somebody miss. Uh, if it works, we, we, we like it. It's one, of, it's one of those things. He, he, he's done a really good job. I think as a part of being a great quarterback is every once in a while you have to make unorthodox throws based on what's happening on the defense, and you have to be able to throw on the move. Our quarterback coach does a great job of trying to rehearse that stuff, um, but he does a lot of that stuff very natural, too, very natural. Yeah, I mean, they're both improving. Um, you know, I think in, in this last game we played, you guys probably know better than me, seven to eight guys, uh, uh, which was good. The more guys we play, the better. Um, the, the, and they're both doing a good job. The good thing with us is we're getting more competition, especially than we had last year. And so that, you know, the cream rises to the cup, and the guys that are most consistent are going to play the most. Um, they're progressing, but so, so are other guys as well. And so, you know, we, as like we all do, we got to keep improving. Uh, yeah, we, we, the first play, the, the, the Illinois play, I thought we, we kind of missed him. You know, and, and I know Adrian wishes he could have that one back. Um, the, the play before, or the play this last game, I know exactly what you're talking about, where he got by the corner. Uh, he kind of misjudged that, and he slowed down a step. I thought Adrian threw a really good ball, and so we got we to gotta keep our speed. And uh, so there's always a give and take there. Like the first, the first game, I think we just we just missed him. The second game, he's got to keep his speed, and that might have been a touchdown. What worries you about Buffalo? <coughs> I mean, a lot of things are good. I mean, they were a top 20 team last year. Uh, de- defensively, you know, they, they they dominated their first opponent. Um, they've got guys that can rush the passer. They tackle really well. Uh, they don't, they haven't really given up. And you know, it's, it's interesting too. It's kind of like last year where. It's all new coaches, so it's a different scheme than they ran last year. But the guys executed it as good as they could possibly execute it as a defense that first game. And so we, we got our work cut out for us from a, you know, a pass rush standpoint because they know how to put pressure on the quarterback. Um, they, they covered well, and, and you know, it was, the, the other team really struggled trying to even get a first down against those guys. I mean, it's going to be a really good test. And they have a lot of guys returning. You know, I know uh, both on both sides of the ball, and as a top 20 team, when you got most of your guys coming back, you should be pretty good. And I think their, their coaching staff has done a great job of keeping it simple and letting those guys play. Is Marquis Seth really starting to maybe separate himself a little bit more from the rest of the running backs? Are you still looking to rotate 
We're still going to rotate. I thought he, uh, you can make an argument that he might have ran the hardest in this last game. Um, I've been really happy with, you know, just his improvement. Because part of his improvement, even though he's an experienced guy and he played for, at a good school before he got here, he's still got to know the offense. He's still got to know all the different f footwork that we asked him to do that was different from what he did at USC. Uh, but the one thing he does when, it, when the ball's in his hand, he runs hard and he runs downhill, which, which we need. Well, yeah, we always want to get him the, him the ball as well as our, our top playmakers. Um, a lot of it's sometimes what the defense is doing. Uh, and, you know, there, there were some things there in the, in the passing game where we thought they gave us some matchups where we could get him the ball. Um, a lot of our, our passing game is progression-based, which that means is based on what the, the quarterback's going to start somewhere, if that guy's open, he's throwing it to him. Could be Austin, could be whoever. If that guy's not open, he moves on to the next guy. And so based on what the defense does, it kind of dictates where the ball is going to go. And it makes it easy for the quarterback. He doesn't have to read coverages and make, he can make quick decisions. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. But to your point, you know, every, every week we think, hey, how are we going to get this guy the ball? How are we going to get this guy the ball? How are we going to get this guy the ball? And not just get him the ball, but get him the ball in situations that they excel at. You know, like Austin does a lot of good things, so it's easy to find situations to get him the ball. Thanks, guys.